Today is September 1st, 2018, and we're going to talk about turmeric truth, how to grow it, and how it works to reduce inflammation. And we're going to talk also about how to properly characterize in the context of using it for health promotion. And we'll look at some inaccurate claims that uh, tend to be made when it comes to uh, taking or eating curcumin so, uh, and turmeric. So what is, uh, this is turmeric. And it looks like ginger, but it has, uh, it's orange, not sort of a light yellowy color, which is what ginger looks like. And turmeric itself is the name of the herb or spice, uh, but what has been found to be uh, most potently anti-inflammatory in turmeric is curcumin. So curcumin is a bioflavonoid-like polyphenol type of substance. And it is one of the most extensively studied natural products across the board for multiple conditions, actually. Uh, and so let's look at a paper that was published in 2008. You can see the title of it, Curcumin, down below. Curcumin as curcumin. <laughs> Bit of an exaggeration. But you can see what this is the flower of turmeric. This is the turmeric roots, top left, and the massive, massive leaves. They look like lily leaves. So this is the root itself, the rhizome. You dry it, you get turmeric powder, and then you extract curcumin, the most potent stuff. Now, that's not to say that we don't get benefit here. It's just that curcumin, the, the unique polyphenol to turmeric, is uh, what gives turmeric the biggest boost. So Turmeric or curcumin has been used in multiple substances. You can see supplements here. I don't know if this is a lozenge. It looks like a lozenge. Band-Aids. And then down here, this Vico, which you can buy on Amazon if you want, is a skin cream. And it's uh, allegedly good for acne and general skin health, which does make sense because acne is a stereotypical pro-inflammatory condition. So... Not, not a bad idea to, to try this. So how else can you consume turmeric? Well, I just use the root, and I personally, you can see down below here, on the bottom of this glass or container is uh, orangey yellow looking. That is uh, turmeric. And the rest of it is kale, cucumber, and celery. So that's how uh, I uh, eat, eat turmeric. I don't, I don't cook with it. I just juice it my, myself. So let's look at growing it. So let's take a, a, a view from, uh, I, I have it growing in three spots. I'm in central Florida, which is a great place to grow turmeric. So this is looking from the corner of my backyard. And you see these big leaves here. These are uh, papaya leaves, the papaya tree that got crushed in the freeze is coming back, starting to fruit. This is a long spindly branch of a growing fig tree that has grown massively and is fruiting like crazy. These leaves are lemongrass. They are edible, obviously. To the right over this way is my biggest, longest growing patch of turmeric. About, I guess I've, this is the second season I let it grow. I didn't take any out to eat. I wanted to see how it grows and develops and, and all the rest. So in the background, let's take a closer view here. Uh, we'll kind of zoom in. We'll jump over the trees and stand right in front of the the, um, the the first row of lemongrass. Oh, up here, by the way, these are banana leaves that are coming out. We'll jump up closer. And so here we are. Here's the lemongrass. I have only a small little bit of grass left. This whole backyard area was just pure grass. And I just dug it all out, yanked it all out, and um, mulched the crap out of it. So what we see here is a really unique, actually, I had this transplanted, a cool sago palm, it's a six footer, kind, kind of rare. So what we see here, actually down over here is a little fig tree that's not liking where I planted it, unfortunately. So this we see is, is, is a prickly pear, another prickly pear struggling a little bit. This is aloe, aloe is a pollinator, and this is a trestle I put together for uh, kiwis that are growing. Along here you see avocados. This avocado got crushed in the hurricane of last year. Out here you can see sweet potatoes growing. So over here is 
my newest turmeric bed. Let's zoom in and look how simple this really is. So got a bunch of dirt filled up. These are cedar uh, and filled up with dirt and good dirt that is, of course. And I just placed 24 pieces of turmeric that I bought from the health food store. So it's organic turmeric. And I put it into the bed just like this. And then after I planted them, mulched over it, and here's what it looks like. So 22 out of the 24 turmerics that I planted uh, are growing, and they're going to grow big, tall, and they're going to spread in that box. Here's another section that where I planted way early. These, these are planted probably, probably early August, and this other one I'm going to show you was planted uh, probably in June, I think. And you can see how big these, so you can see these look like lilies. Look how big this is. And depending upon the spot I planted it, like this guy is small, this guy is huge. So what, what's over here? This is stevia. This is a cocktail citrus tree. This is ginger growing quite robustly there. The shadow that you see right here is a kumquat shadow. This is an avocado tree. And back here, these, stick, these skinny little trunks here, those are moringa. So I'm going to do a quick little... Uh, moringa uh, divergence here to show you how big this sucker got. So I planted moringa back last maybe April from seed. It was like literally eight inches tall and it grew to about 15 feet and then the hurricanes came and the freeze came so I basically hacked it back to maybe about a foot. So it started off at a foot uh, and this is just the trunks and then and then additional sprouting trunks grow from where you cut it and now you can see how tall this, this is about 16 feet tall, Moringa growth. And it sprouted additional trunks. So we got a bunch of trunks. Many of my Moringa look like this. And I want to see if they, hopefully we won't have a freeze this year so they can seed. Because when they seed, they give fantastic, I mean, some of the most profoundly healthy greens and seeds come from Moringa. And they don't like freeze. They do like the Central Florida growing area. You just hack them back and they grow again. It's really quite amazing, actually. So... This is the second biggest area of turmeric that I have growing. And you saw the first a small, and this is where uh, I planted these guys last spring. You can see how big they are. They're like six feet tall now. Six feet tall. Take, I took that picture from on this side. So this is the, uh, the uh, uh, fig tree that's growing. So this is big, big turmeric growth. I mean, these are really robust, robust trunks from these from these roots. It's really amazing, actually. Here is a turmeric flower, a close-up. It looks like what you saw from that paper cure, cure cumin. So this is the turmeric flower. And I'm pretty sure I haven't done it yet, but the flowers, I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100% sure. The flowers are edible, as are the greens. And then, of course, if you hack them back, because after it starts to get cold, the turmeric, the turmeric uh, can only handle, you need at least 10 months of the year where it's pretty hot. And, uh, above 70-ish so that these turmeric grow. Otherwise, if you have less than that, they tend not to. So central Florida and south is really good for that. Northern Florida too, probably. I'm not sure how far up into Georgia it goes. I've not studied that. So how does curcumin slash turmeric work? So this is the paper again, cure cumin or curcumin as cure cumin. You see it was published in 2008. And in this article, they talked about Dosing subjects with rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid arthritic subjects were given 1,200 milligrams of curcumin or 300 milligrams of phenylbutazone, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. So the curcumin was well tolerated, no side effects, exerted an anti-rheumatic activity comparable to the NSAID. Now, it's important to understand that that does not mean that either one of these cures rheumatoid arthritis because curcumin cannot cure rheumatoid arthritis. It just doesn't work like that. So what does curcumin do? Well, same paper, so this is 10 years old, and, and the evidence hasn't changed, changed much since then. So they gave up to 12 grams of curcumin per day for three months, so you know that uh, high doses are not problematic. Quite safe, quite safe. And just think about the traditional Indian and Pakistani uh, meals packed full of turmeric and ginger. Now, turmeric is much more peppery, spicy. 
Ginger is less peppery, but quite spicy, of course. So other clinical trials suggest a potential therapeutic benefit or role for curcumin in diseases. So what does this mean, a potential therapeutic role? Well, it can help manage these conditions that are not caused by a lack of turmeric. They're caused by overeating. So they can help. If you take curcumin, you're not going to, I mean, pretty weak odds you're going to cure cancer of any kind or cure pancreatitis or psoriasis or anything else. You're going to have a therapeutic benefit, which means that these highly pro-inflammatory conditions will be slightly impacted by the anti-inflammatory nature of curcumin, of, of, of turmeric. So let's look at the mechanisms, because it's important to have this just kind of in your head in general. So we know that curcumin, so its effect is on inflammation. Now you look at the words used here, inflammation-mediated diseases. So these pre the previous condition we just looked at, they're inflammation-mediated. What they, that means actually is that is that you become inflammation. And so these inflammation, these diseases are actually inflammation diseases. They're not inflammation mediated. They are inflammation. So all those conditions are inflammation. And so when you take curcumin or any other polyphenol, uh, there is a downregulation of pro-inflammatory activity. You get what you want, you get immune system suppression. Now that is calming it down. We get an inhibition of a signaling molecule called the nuclear factor, and cytokines activity, cytokine levels are reduced, as are enzymes that promote inflammation. And this reduction of inflammation helps to improve insulin sensitivity uh, in adipocytes. So there is a benefit for multiple conditions via this inflammation reduction. Now, Here's the problem with all of this when people start looking at this naturally, because people want natural, ben natural, a natural approach. And there's a bit missing when people talk about this. Let me show you what I mean. So this, I pulled, I forget where it came from, but note the title. Turmeric and omega-3s can cure diabetes, but you'll never hear that from your doctor. And there's a reason why you'll never hear that from your doctor, because it's not true. <laughs> this is completely, completely absurd. Now, how do I mean it's completely absurd? Let's go to India. Now, remember, Turmeric can cure diabetes. Basically, every meal consumed by Indians when they make it at home contains turmeric. Let's look. Let's go to India real, real quick. Diabetes in India is India's fastest growing disease. So how could diabetes be growing in India as the fastest disease if every meal basically contains turmeric and quite often lots of it? It means because turmeric cannot overpower the consumption of excess calories. So when we talk about, I mean, think of, look at the size of this dude. And this is quite common. There are guys like, there are guys bigger than this all over the place. Now, of course, what they do is they throw burgers and cheese in there and they mix, oh my God, the burger and the cheese. Well, if you just keep the burger and cheese there, you take away the bun and you take away the French fries and put in calories of equal or half the amount of the french fry and bun calories and make it vegetables. All of a sudden, the pro-inflammatory potential of, 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 of meat and cheese calories is diminished because high, now look at the word here, positive calorie balance, positive, positive caloric balance. This is too much calories. Well, if you take away the bun and the fries, you drop two, three, four hundred calories and you replace it with 200 calories of vegetables, you cut the calories in half and you have massive anti-inflammatory polyphenols, uh, which have a similar effect that curcumin has. So in order for this guy who has diabetes probably and heart disease, for curcumin to have any effect, you'd have to take like this much curcumin, turmeric. I mean, it's absurd. So you cannot cure obesity or diabetes by taking turmeric, especially when the amount we take is like this. You really think that this much, seriously, this much turmeric is going to cure everything. And the people that are, who, who suffer from chronic conditions are these people typically. So it does not make any sense to use that language. It is an accurate language and it can be confusing. So the best way to view inflammation, chronic disease in the context of 
supplementation and diet, uh, and of course I am biased, but it would be this. So we have those pro-inflammatory calories. This is the cover of my book, The Deflame Diet. Here are the pro-inflammatory calories that give us this positive, which means excess caloric balance that causes us to pack on fat and pushes us towards obesity, diabetes, and all the other chronic diseases. If we take those calories away and replace the calories with, and even doesn't have to be the exact amount of calories, it'd be very difficult to actually, uh, you replace the the, the pro-inflammatory re refined calories on the bottom with vegetation, which are anti-inflammatory. That's what you want to do. So now, not up here is, is turmeric. This is just vegetation. We do have garlic, which is also quite anti-inflammatory. And so, and onions as well, quite anti-inflammatory. There's no turmeric up there or ginger. Uh, but if we added that, even better to add spices. So, so let's look at the, the curcumin article and the effects on inflammation. We downregulate pro-inflammatory responses. We suppress inappropriately excessive immune activity, so we suppress immune activation. We make a normal homeostatic, uh, we push it towards normal homeostasis. And we downregulate the production of multiple pro-inflammatory mediators, and we improve insulin sensitivity. So how can you kind of visualize this? Well, this is from chapter 12 of the, the Deflame Diet book that goes into uh, the the, the pro-inflammatory state in a more scientific detail perspective. So bef remember before you saw a nuclear factor? Well, there it is. Remember before you saw cytokines? Well, there they are. Before you saw a Cox, Cox enzyme? There you are. Well, there's more, of course, but this is what they mentioned in, their, in that Cure Cuman article. And all these inhibitory effects have been known for a long time. I put this image together four years ago. So up top here we see spices. This will be any spice. Turmeric, curcumin, ginger, rosemary, whatever you like. And fortunately, there were no, you cannot grow turmeric or ginger in, in Scandinavia, but the Scandinavians have their own anti-inflammatory spices. So all these natural substances, what they do is they have a generalized anti-inflammatory effect. So curcumin and others will inhibit free radicals, and that will turn off the nuclear factor, and it will stop overproducing and releasing these substances. So we'll get a direct inhibitory effect of the nuclear factor. We'll also get an activation of this anti-inflammatory signaling molecule called peroxisome proliferator activator receptor, PPAR. It inhibits the nuclear factor. And then we get inhibition of the enzymes. And so what the outcome is less inflammation being released, which leads to less CRP. So CRP is a marker of chronic inflammation. And when this goes down, it means that the system is being deflamed, and that's what curcumin does. The odds that any one of these up top here is going to just cure something is really an outlier situation. We have to be, it has to be a lifestyle factor, and then we add in these anti-inflammatory factors. So when it comes to the man we saw in that previous image, and virtually nobody gets diabetes unless they're over fat, and they can be skinny fat, but most people tend to be over fat and obese, is we got to get a handle on overeating, which is why I wrote this book. This is my brother. In 2007, after being in 2007, after five years of overeating because of suffering with his chronic neurological condition called uh, cervical dystonia or spasmodic torticollis, he pigged out and went from 190 to 340 in that five-year period. And then he had a mental change. He, he, he got control. Look, what, look at the subtitle of this book, Why Your Brain, Body Physiology, Emotions, and Primordial Drives Want You Fat and What You Can Do About It. So we have four basic drivers of, of obesity that we need to be aware of and then, and then mentally engage the situations so we can steer our lives properly. Well, that's what he did. And he lost 150 pounds in less than a year, and he's weighed... 190 going on 12 years now, which is basically unheard of. So this book is, is free as a Prime Amazon Kindle member, and it is 99 cents otherwise as a Kindle, and otherwise it's just $12.95. If you go to deflame.com, you can see, you can click to get more info and order the Deflame Diet Book, and also you can click here and order the... Uh, uh, the, the Weight Loss Secrets book. And so the way to look at curcumin and all these other cures, CBD and all the rest of it, is we got to realize that 
None of those supplements, or drugs, by the way, supplements and drugs cannot counteract this lifestyle in a meaningful way. We, in a meaningful way, we have to reduce the consumption of these calories and get ourselves back to a proper body weight, which is typically anti-inflammatory, and then eat in an anti-inflammatory fashion, and then we have a much better chance of reducing the expression of these pro-inflammatory conditions, which have essentially the identical cause, but when you go and get treated with them at, uh, at, in, in, uh, at a hospital or a medical doctor's office, they're gonna give you specific drugs for these named conditions. And these drugs, they impact pro-inflammatory pathways. What you need to do is also stop the drive to the inflammatory process by avoiding these calories and replacing them with these calories and getting control of your eating brain so that you can keep your weight where it should be.